I'm Wendy. Today I'm painting a snowy tree. It's a watercolour tutorial using only two colours. These here are the reference photographs that I used. I took these photographs last winter when we had more snow. I really enjoy painting snow and I like to paint the season so I'm going to fit one or two more snow scenes in now before the spring. Looking at these two photographs now there are so many different compositions you could do. I decided to put the tree on the left hand side to simplify it. Um, I liked the river or the lake area there with the ice on it at the back and those distant trees and I wanted to try and keep it a very simple composition and not too fussy. <laughs> I did make it a little bit fussy so wait till the end and we'll see how I got along. I also wanted to keep the colours quite muted as in the photographs so I just used two colours. I used the um, burnt sienna and cobalt blue. I think you can see those two colours would mix nicely with the greys in the first picture that I'm showing you here. But I also like the orange in the second picture. So in the sky I'm using the burnt sienna on its own, very dilute, so to give that um, effect of the sunset there with a little bit of orange showing through the sky. I've mixed up a grey with the two colours and um, I've got that little bit of burnt sienna there on its own as you can see. I'm not being really particular about the sky, just let the colours run into each other. I'm painting over the smaller branches but around the bigger trunks. It wouldn't matter if you went over them because the trees are going to be a lot darker than the background. But sometimes I think by doing this you can leave little specks of white um, which just happen spontaneously and can stand for little specks of snow on the tree. With a stiffer mix of the two colours then I'm painting the distant trees. I'm using the side of the brush and the sky is still wet so we're getting a wet into wet effect of those distant trees there. It's sort of pushing them back into the distance because of the soft edges on them and I think they look quite nice there. Unfortunately my horizon line on the right is going uphill and I really wanted that to be totally horizontal so you'll see I'll do a little bit of adjusting. It's all still quite wet so I'm just doing a, a line underneath the trees and then just blending it in with the paint that's already there and maybe a little bit of water. I really liked the ice in the distance there below the trees so I've just sketched in with pencil lines where the ice is and then as you can see I'm putting on a flat wash laying the strokes horizontally and on the right hand side I've added what I hope is a little bit of perspective there by making the ice come into the right hand side you can see what I'm doing when I finished and I think it does work quite nicely. With these flat washers you want to keep the paint even so you do need to keep the edges really soft and wet. Um, work around your picture and keep, keep working into the edges there as I'm showing you now so you're not getting any hard lines forming. I had to be very careful not to paint over all the white ice that was there so I did this quite carefully and you'll see as I come down to the bottom near the snowy bank that I made some quite hard edges there so that the snow on the bank would stand out against that blue water. Yeah, I say blue water, we always think of water as being blue but this is a grey, it's a grey day although it's a lovely day so don't, um, if you want to keep the, the, the atmosphere of this picture, don't put too much of the cobalt blue in there. Keep it a nice grey. I do have a video on how to put on a flat wash, which may be helpful, particularly if you're just a beginner. So I'll put a link in the description box below. I'm using a weaker mix here with a little bit more blue in it to suggest some shadows on the ground underneath the tree. If I remember there were some rocks there and some mounds of soil. I'm working quite spontaneously here putting the shadow colours on 
it's looking like the light is coming mainly from the left or the top so I'm sort of keeping that light direction going there and I'm working wet into wet just putting some of the darker mix just to bring the changes add some deeper shadows there and bringing a bit of the shadow into the foreground but nothing too harsh and nothing too distracting and I'm putting some clean water in places on the side of the shadow so we've got some soft edges and some hard edges. There are many ways of tackling this foreground in the shadows but I wanted to keep it very simple and I don't want to distract from the, um, from the landscape behind in the tree. You'll have noticed that I'm putting these shadows on before I paint the loose rocks and stones beneath the tree. I find this works better because if you do those first, even if they're dry, if you put the shadow on top of them like this, then it disturbs the paint on the rocks and it merges in with the shadows and it doesn't look right. You want those rocks and little stones and things that you're going to put on to actually be quite hard edged. So the stage now is to paint the tree and I'm using my two colours, my burnt sienna and cobalt. I've got a couple of colour mixers here and what I'm trying to do is to work wet into wet, have some changes of slight changes of colour because this is a tonal picture rather than a colourful picture, have some changes of colour and also try and work in a few tonal changes as well. I've switched to a rigger here. If you want some tips on using the rigger brush, uh, my last video was all about how to do branches and trees using this brush, so you might want to check that out. And I'll put a link in the description box below for you. These trees had ivy over parts of them, so this is what I'm doing here now. I'm just suggesting that the ivy was growing up the branches and up the main trunk and it also softens the hard lines, the outline of the trunk as well, so I think that works quite nicely. I'm keeping an eye on my reference photographs um, just to help with the twigs and with the grasses growing from the base of the trunk.
I didn't want to overdo the um, the branches and the twigs here and get everything too fussy. So it was really just a case of knowing when to stop. I used a very stiff mix to do the reeds and the grasses growing out from the um, banks of the river. And to accentuate the top of the rocks or the mounds of earth there covered in snow, I did darken the base of the grasses um, in places. I think this also helps to give the illusion that they're growing behind these mounds of snow. I also popped on a few dots here and there to stand for remains of autumn leaves. Again, it was just a case of knowing when to stop with this. The snow shadows were totally dry um, and this is the stage, as, as I was saying earlier, that I put on the little stones or some marks to stand for the soil showing through the snow. It goes on quite nicely now and there's no blurring of edges. You can work wet into wet and add some darker tones to these first washes that I'm putting on. When everything was totally dry I rubbed out all the pencil marks and then put a little mount around it just to get a sense of where to go next. This is always a really helpful thing to do. Now this painting could have been left as it was. I felt it did need something else. It's all so subjective. I put in some darker tones on the tree and when they were dry I did a little bit of gouache splattering with the toothbrush. And finally, it really is finally, just a few strokes with the rigger using the white gouache. Oh yes, and I forgot a few little dots to stand for snowflakes. Oh dear and a few little grasses in the foreground. Well, looking at it, I don't think it's overly fussy. I'm quite happy with it. I think especially the background is working well. Let me know what you think in the comments. And do have a go yourself. It's a very simple little picture and it's very good for learning lots of watercolour techniques. So do enjoy your painting and I'll see you soon.